All right, welcome back. Today we're gonna to look at how to configure VLANs for a home networking setup. So let's jump in. And if you're new here, hi, this is Sonoran Tech, where we cover a wide range of tech topics from hardware to home labs to coding and current events. If you like the content, please hit the sub button and leave a comment to let me know any other topics you're interested in seeing. So with that, if you just upgraded to a VLAN enabled device, such as a unified dream machine, you may be wondering the best way to set up VLANs. And the short answer to that, as with everything, is that there is no right answer. It really just depends on your particular configuration and the trade-offs you're willing to make for your different situations. Now in this video, I'm not going to go into the details about what a VLAN is, but just to baseline it, we'll start with a simple definition. A VLAN allows you to segment your physical network into multiple logical networks. And in the case of a home network, it'll basically allow you to control what devices have access to each other. Now, if you're interested in learning a bit more about VLANs, I did a separate video that digs into how VLANs work, and in particular on a dream machine, why you'll find there's a one-to-one -one relationship between VLANs and subnets, you can actually see this right here in front of us, which is my VLAN setup. And you can see for each one of my networks, we do have a separate subnet. And so I, I dug into a bit about why that is, how it works behind the scenes, and that'll give you a bit more of a flavor of how VLANs work. And like I said earlier, if you're coming from a device without VLANs, like a simple ISP provided router, or in my case, I came from a Firewalla, and this is the first time you play with VLANs, it can be a little bit confusing and figure out how to set them up and segment things. So what we'll do is we will just jump into this uh, by diagramming a few things. So I'm gonna jump over to draw.io here and we will make, and we'll make some diagrams. So let's start by drawing a simple home network and show how we could evolve this using VLANs. And so here, what we'll do is we'll just throw a bunch of devices. What something you might see in a typical, typical home network. So you might have some laptops in the house. I'll just pop in a couple of these. And then we'll put a couple PCs in. Maybe you have PCs in different uh, rooms of the house, like office, you know, kids' rooms, etc. Everyone's carrying a laptop around. Now, of course, everyone has phones. So we'll say there's, uh, we'll do a couple iPhones. I'll drop an iPad in here. Now you may even have other devices, like maybe you have an Xbox or a PS5, or maybe you have a couple of them. But basically here you have like, you have the various computing devices your family uses. You have like common devices like an Xbox. And then you get into, you know, these days houses have more and more internet of things devices. So you might have your garage door opener. You might have a couple of those. Now let's say you have a thermostat or a couple of those. You maybe have a Nest or, or something else. And you probably have streaming devices like, well, let's just get rid of that. Maybe you have uh, an Apple TV or maybe you have something like a fire stick. And if we go a step further, I mean, maybe you've gone a, gotten a bit more serious. Maybe you have a home NAS, and maybe we even have some cameras, some blink cameras. Um, maybe you've gone full RGB with your house and you have some lighting. So I'll just say a Hue controller. All right, now you can see even in a, a common house these days, this can be a mess of devices pretty quickly because each person has a number of devices and now you're getting more and more Internet of Things devices just built into houses themselves. If you're coming from a traditional like ISP provider router, all of these are gonna be on the same network. So effectively what's happening in that world is we're just gonna draw this. You basically have one network covering all of this. So imagine you have your Comcast provided network and it has a router built in. Now all these devices are going to sit on the same network. And you probably didn't even notice this. Ima imagine they're all on the network like 162.168.10. I'm just making it up, 10.x. Now each of these devices will be on this network, right? What that means is all these devices can see each other. This thermostat can see this laptop on the network or this PC can see this NAS or these cameras can see the Xbox, right? Basically, if I were to spend the time drawing all these lines, you'd have a fully connected graph. Every device can see every other device. So why does this really matter? There are two main factors that play into this, at least from my point of view. The first is privacy. Do you want your thermostat to know, let's look at the thermostat, 
what other devices are on your network. Now you can imagine you have a thermostat, it is sending information about your network to back home for data collection, analysis, all of that. And you can imagine your thermostat does that, all your cameras, all these devices may do that. And especially with the evolving landscape of privacy agreements, you can't really be too sure which one of these devices is collecting what information and what they're doing. So while you may think your data is not being collected, you never know. The second thing to consider is security. So imagine we'll go to one of these cameras. So imagine you have an internet of things device, like one of these cameras, maybe your thermostat, maybe something like a garage door opener. And let's just say that like they're not particularly well written or they don't get regular security updates, etc. Imagine one of these is compromised through some security vulnerability. Now this uh, compromised garage door opener, or this camera has easy access to jump to another device on your network and potentially put everything in your house at risk. So imagine through a security vulnerability in your camera, someone could get over to your laptop and say, access your private files on your laptop, install ransomware, et cetera. It could be a real mess. And so what we can do is we can use VLANs to segment these. So what we'll do is we're just gonna start with, and let me just jump back to, these are my VLANs. You can say I have a bunch of them, but we're gonna start simple and say, how could we segment a home network like this into two VLANs? And so what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna make two VLANs and we're gonna have one set up for Internet of Things and we're gonna have the other one set up for trusted devices. So what we'll do is, I will just put the Internet of Things devices on the right side. So I'll put like the laptop there, we'll get rid of these arrows. We'll put our cameras there, our Hue controller. We could put our Apple TV and Fire TV stick. That's, a, that's actually gonna be an interesting one. And we'll definitely put the garage door opener there. You know, we don't trust that. And along the way, I'm going to say when I was configuring these VLANs, I got annoyed by all the devices in the household. And so I simplified things a little bit. So I'm actually just going to go delete a few devices just to make our diagram simpler. Great. So in theory, now imagine we have this configured and we create separate VLANs for each of these and we place the devices on each VLAN. Now what you would see is, and I'm gonna make up the, the network. So you'd say all of, these, all of these devices will be on the network 192.168.10 and all these devices will be on the network 192.168.20. Now what you'll see, I'm kind of using the terms of like subnets and VLANs interchangeably. As I kind of said uh, briefly before, uh, there's a one-to-one -one relationship uh, between them. But basically you would set a VLAN when you configure the VLAN, what's gonna happen is all these devices, their traffic gets tagged with a VLAN number, which exists at, in the ethernet frames and same here. And so that allows your router to make sure traffic doesn't flow between them unless, unless uh, the rules in the router allow that to happen. And that's a bit of a separate subject, but in theory, so now you've configured these in your router and you can say, okay, all the devices in here, these are trusted devices. I am fine with all these devices communicating with each other potentially and knowing that they exist. So I think it's perfectly fine if like a family PC knows that the laptop exists. In, fa in fact, you may want that. So you can share files between them, et cetera. You may on your Xbox want to be able to look at files on the PC to show photos, et cetera. So this all makes sense. Now we would call this maybe like an IOT network or an untrusted network and here you can see things like a garage door opener, thermostat, cameras, the stuff we're not so sure about and definitely doesn't need access. Like you really don't need your cameras talking to anything over here, right? There's no reason for that. And now with by setting up your VLANs in this way, you can ensure that doesn't happen. Now, going back to the two points we brought up as to why you might do this, let's talk about privacy and security. So. If one of these devices is gathering a whole bunch of data about your network and sending it home, well, it's only gonna learn about what is here with it. And the same goes for this side as well. So they don't see the whole thing, they still see quite a bit, but again, they don't have the whole picture of your house. And then from a security standpoint, right, if this camera becomes compromised, it can only compromise the other devices here and it's not gonna to get to any of your, your household, uh, important household information. Now there is one interesting thing about this di diagram. You see, I put the Apple TV and the Fire TV stick here. That's a debatable point. And this is where the trade-offs come into play when you're talking about VLANs. Now you may be like, well, hey, I, I don't know, like 
I don't know if I trust the Fire TV stick. I don't know if I want it accessing any of this. So you could just throw it over here on the right hand side. However, the downside is that if you're the kind of person that has family photos, videos, or if you're using like a media server and your media server is say over here on your NAS, well, guess what? Your Fire TV stick can't access your NAS. So that's a problem. Now, of course, there's, there's two solutions to this. The first is, well, you could just move this over to this network and you're good to go. Or you can do, use firewall rules to allow the Fire TV stick to access this network. The trade-off there, again, you can see this is a game of trade-offs, right? You can be like, well, this is easy. It'll work perfectly. However, I'm not sure I, I feel comfortable with this device being in the same VLAN as these other devices, just in case something was to go wrong. The other solution would be to configure firewall rules to allow this device to access this VLAN. And that adds a configuration and maintenance overhead. And especially if you're dealing with, with families that wonder why something isn't working, et cetera, it can be a pain, but that, that's one of the trade-offs. But now let's take this a step further. We'll add a little more complexity and see what happens. You can be like, okay, you know what? I like this, but you know what? I have these kids and they have, and they click on everything. And I am convinced that they are, their computers, they're gonna like click on some link on Discord or someone on Roblox is gonna do something to them and one and their PCs are going to get compromised. And you know what? I really don't want one of their PCs accessing, you know, my laptop or the NAS with all of our personal family information in it. So what we could do is like, hey, we can create a third VLAN and we can segment these out. So we can do it. Well, I can do it easy because it's a diagram. We can just do something like this and be like, okay, no problem. There we go. We have a third VLAN. We could, it's on another network. We could call this the kids VLAN, right? And now the same things apply. So these two, these two kids PCs, they can only see each other. Perfect. They cannot access. When things go bad with one of your kids PCs, he's not gonna go over here and hit, say your work laptop and compromise your work. So you're good to go. And vice versa, he's not gonna be able to go off and I don't know why, but impact your cameras, your garage door opener, anything else, all good. But of course this adds complexity. Now what would happen, and I've lived this, so um, I'm sharing like real stories. Now imagine you have something like this, which is like, hey, well, we have a printer in the house. So where does the printer go? You're like, well, yeah, I bought this printer from HP or Canon and it's stealing my money for ink. I certainly don't trust it to sit there on the same network with all my personal data. So I, I wanna put it over here. Well, this is great. I feel safe, you know, it can steal my money for ink and it can steal the data of what other uh, devices I have. However, now we have the problem of my kids are gonna yell at me when they need to print their homework and you know other people in the house who are adults are also going to yell at me as well because they print can't print anything and of course you know you can solve it i can put it over here i can make my spouse happy but my kids are not happy i'll leave it here and so what we do is you solve this like i said before by configuring firewall rules by and it allows you to start to basically punch holes and allow very very specific access between these separate networks which is great so now you know my kids can print something when they need to and everyone's happy right but like i said before now we've added complexity and configuration overhead so if you're listening to this and you're managing the network that problem's on you so if something happens with the printer and the network configuration and no one can access things or you're debugging it you're going to have to remember that like, oh, right, the printer's on a separate VLAN. That could be part of the problem. I need to go debug that. Hey, it, this is one additional configuration. Now let's take things even a step further because, hey, like this, we want to add complexity, right? And just see what happens. Now let's say we look at this and say, well, I have a NAS. In my case, we have the Synology. Everything in the household is on here. You have the financial files. You have, you know, everyone's photos and videos. And this is like the data archive for the household. Let's say I don't even trust this set of devices to access. I want to be super controlling of it. So what you could do is you could take the NAS and you could put it on its own VLAN. And so we'll take a minute, rearrange the diagram and get that done. All right, now we have our NAS segmented onto its own VLAN. As it as it sits today, like, so the NAS couldn't access anything and nothing can access the NAS. So it's perfectly safe and perfectly unusable. But of course, now we're back to the trade-offs, right? More complexity. To allow devices to access this, you're going to have to start to configure rules on your router. And so you might say, hey, look, I'm good with access in this direction. Notice you can say the NAS can't reach out, right? This can be one directional and be like, if these are these are trusted devices, this is like the adult laptops and PCs and devices, and they can access the 
screen as if they want to obviously save files you know edit photos all that that's all good the kids can't access it that seems reasonable and of course you don't want any of these devices accessing your NAS either it's nice and safe but of course now you're going to face interesting you know more trade-off questions which is you have these kids uh, PCs like they have important data too especially if you have a NAS as like a, a backup device and we just said I'm super worried about these kids PCs getting compromised well it seems like a good idea to have a backup of the PC somewhere else when that day comes that they get ransomware so you can be like well okay now I could configure a rule to allow one directional access from this network to the NAS and at least they can do snapshot backups to the NAS. Okay, that makes sense. Seems reasonable. Again, you know, more configuration complexity. And what you can see you start to evolve to is a bit of a hierarchy where I, you know, you have things like a NAS are the most important things at the bottom of the hierarchy and you start to group things almost by trust levels as you go up and you're very careful about how you grant access between them. And of course that comes with the cost of management of rules. If we go back to where we started at the beginning where all these were in one network there's zero rule management it's super easy everything works but it has those downsides with like privacy and everything else now last but not least you'll see this in a lot of places when you kind of learn about vlans is it is very common to set up a vlan i'm going to draw this one a little differently but we'll just call it for guests and you would associate it with a wi-fi ssid as well and so you have guests come to your house and you can give them like the guest uh, wi-fi code and you can imagine this has access to nothing like it it only has internet access and that's it. And devices like the Unified Dream Machine, actually you can set up these networks so the devices on it can't even talk to each other. So they are completely on their own. So that is a simple logical walkthrough of how you go from a home with a set of devices on a single network, a single VLAN, to different ways you may partition them out and some of the trade-offs along the ways. And just to kind of wrap this up, I'm gonna show you my network configuration and kind of walk you through how I thought about it, which is not surprisingly very simple to the very similar to the diagram I just looked at. So let's start. So I just have the, the internal VLAN is just kind of built in. So I have an IoT VLAN. And so this is everything in the house, the thermostats, like I said, the garage door opener, all go onto this. And this is kind of the catch all. I think I have printers there. I don't remember. I have a guest network, which I actually have never used because I guess I don't have enough guests. I do have a separate network for, I call it for a NAS, but it's really for a lot of home lab stuff. So I have a couple home lab servers in there sitting next to the NAS, and this is probably not the optimal configuration, but when you're playing around with like, you know, Proxmox servers or other storage servers, just having them all on the same network so they can see each other makes things much easier. So I do have that set up. I have a core network, and this is back to this diagram. This is basically the network for adults and trust devices. I have a kids network for all the reasons I went over before and I did separate off the streaming devices in the house to another network. So this is like the Fire TV sticks, the Apple TV, etc. And basically I just wanted them to see themselves and only see the internet. I have the cameras on a separate network as well. Again, just for clean segmentation. And then I do a lot of for actual work work. I keep my work device on its own network just for the reason of I don't need anything on my work machine seeing what else is at home and vice versa. It's on its own. And then I keep a network around mainly for development and playing around. And this is where when I'm doing home lab stuff and I'm setting up new virtual machines and playing around, I tend to kind of split them between this, this NAS network and the development network. And frankly, I don't have a good protocol for keeping these separated. But like I said before, each one of these and separating the machines on them adds overhead configuration firewall rules. I have even not been perfect about how I segment these things and where I put the different machines. But that's it. That is a super quick introduction to VLANs, really at a logical level. I hope this helps a little bit to shed some light on how you may configure your home network. Like I said at the top, there's no right answer to this. It's really about how you want to segment things, what you want to achieve in terms of privacy and security. I will say just from a general guidance perspective, and I'm going to say this personally, and in addition to what I have learned of, as I've kind of looked at other content creators, I think it's a really good practice to at least segment your internet of things devices. I personally think it's just too risky and starting with two VLANs and segmenting off your Internet of Things devices seems like a great starting point with a really good ROI, right? I think you'll get really good improvement in security and safety for your household in doing that without the hugely complex overhead 
of managing like the diagram I have here. So that's a good starting point. That's my two cents. And so what we'll do next time is we'll dive a little deeper into how do you actually configure these on a dream machine and ensure they're set up correctly, set up some of the firewall rules to manage communication between them. So we'll leave it here and we'll see you next time.